You can help escort somebody else up. All right. Go ahead, Sandy. Come on. But as she's coming, I, I just, I don't know what I'm doing this morning. Uh, just so much has happened. She, she messed me all up because I got home and got a phone call from Sandra yesterday just reminding me that she did invite me with her cousin who was just like her brother from another mother. And, uh, and I'm going to eat with them. It's the best Italian kitchen in town. Try it sometime, DiMaggio's, but you have to have a reservation. <laughs> Not really. So I'm going to go there and have a good Italian meal afterward. But so she called me to remind me yesterday because I forgot once. I know. She did. She made it for me, and I wasn't there. And so, yes, but she's very forgiving. But, but she's a special lady and been a part of Bethel for years. She has been. And uh, her daughter grew up on her youth group, Angela, mm -hmm. married a young man by the name of Tanner. Tanner Cross, you may faintly remember his name because he's a phys ed teacher who stood up and said, I can't do to these kids what you're asking me to do. And uh, so you remember that may, he's a phys ed teacher from? Loudoun County. Loudoun County, Virginia. Bedroom community to Washington, D.C. And remember, that's where, that's where because of the accents of the Loudoun County School Board, uh, and the confusion about who can go in a girl's room and who can't go in a girl's room. A couple girls were raped uh, in different different places or less, by the same by the same guy who just got transferred from one school to another. Mm -hmm. This kind of stuff is happening. And uh, thank God for Christian attorneys who will take up cases pro bono to defend people who are standing for righteousness and for justice. Amen? Amen. I thank God for that. But out of Tanner's action uh, and out of, the, out of the news all erupted about all that stuff, a Republican governor was elected by the name of Glenn Youngin. And, uh, and, uh, but the devil never gives up. So we better never give up. In fact, somebody, I think Lori Ortiz in the last, what's the uh, news, newsletter they put out? Hmm? Okay. She said, while we were sleeping, she, she wrote an article, while we were sleeping. And uh, Sandra just showed it to me, and, and, and uh, I hadn't read it yet. While we were sleeping, this happened, and this happened, and this happened. Wait! So Tanner, Tanner's church decided we're going to open a private Christian school. And uh, and, and uh, they asked Tanner if he would be interested. Tanner didn't jump on board right away, but eventually he felt the Lord give him a release to do it. And so he thought he would start the school year at this private Christian school. But lo and behold, there was something that that had to happen, so he had to go back to the public school system for, uh, because of some reason. And uh, I want you to now know what has happened with Tanner and Angela. Go ahead. First of all, I just wanted to be back here. Is this on? Uh, and um, worship is always wonderful at Bethel. This story didn't just start two years ago. This story started 17 years ago when Angela was called to work in Fairfax County, Virginia, as a teacher. Prior to her leaving, there was a pool party that the youth group put on, and Julia Peace was in the pool at the time. Angela was in the pool. Angela had not been baptized. So Julia Peace officiated her baptism in this pool. When Angela came out of the water, Julia Peace gave a word for Angela, and the word was God was calling her into Virginia for a work he was preparing her to do. Now, when a prophetic word is spoken over your children and grandchildren, the word has to be 
hovered over, protected, prayed for. I call the communion of saints, come around it. And in the last 17 years, that's what's been happening. When Angela and Tanner met, Tanner did not know the Lord. And that frightened me that she was in, involved with a young man, engaged actually, ready to commit to him, and he had not accepted the Lord. So one morning, as we always gather in my kitchen, Tanner's on one side of the island, I'm on the other, and he says, Mom, what is all this religious stuff Angela's always talking about? So I said, Tanner, Angela has a call on her life. He says, what's that? So I'm here to tell you, within the last 10 years, my son-in-law has become a godly man. He was baptized. He serves the Lord. There isn't a morning that I wake up at their home, because I'm there a lot, that he's not in the word. And he has a hundred questions. And when he gets the answers, he gets emotional. Because he's now understanding how God loves him. And I think that if there's a message to be given, you know, I watch a little, a little program called Touched by an Angel. And in this little program, no matter what the circumstances are in the, in the story, the last words the angel says to the person who's uh, grieving or whatever, she says, God sent me to you to tell you how much he loves you. And what does love do to a man or a woman? Perfect love. Cast out fear. When Byron Tanner Cross went to the school board meeting to speak, he had the courage of Christ because he had uh, began to understand the love of Jesus. Now, we recently just became Mommy, Daddy, and Mima through an adoption. There is nothing that I want to do more than protect and provide for this baby. As a grandma spiritually and every other way. I was sitting here listening, thinking. You know, there was a man in the Bible called Hezekiah. The beginning, it says he was a godly man. He, he, was, he had favor in the sight of the Lord. But one of the last things in his life was, through pride, he showed everything he owned to Babylon. And Isaiah the prophet went in and said to him, because of what you've done, Hezekiah, your children, your grandchildren, your great children are going to be carried off. You're preaching. And, and, and he says, as long as, I don't, as long as I, 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 I don't see it in my time. Grandmas and grandpas and mommies and daddies. Byron Tanner Cross was asked to sign a document last week that if a child in Loudoun County went to him and told him that they wanted to transgender, he was not to call their mother or their father. He was to answer the questions to the children. This is dictated from Loudoun County School District. It's coming to a theater near you. So we have to have the courage to stand up we have to have the courage to stand up. Grandmas and grandpas, and I'm sure there's plenty of you here, you need to stand up. And how do you stand up? You stand up by voting. You see, Pastor Ron said Glenn Youngkin came in and was elected governor because of what Tanner did. He, he linked into Tanner. And when Tanner, when Tanner did this move two years ago, everybody in, in Virginia was rah rah Tanner. But the legislation in Virginia is Democrat. So every time the governor tries to pass a law, the Democrat legislation shuts them down. So we need people who vote for righteousness to take care of our children to, so that we don't lose our rights to speak. You see, that's what, what's, what's at risk here. We're losing our fundamental rights in this nation to, to, to practice a faith that we're not arrested because of righteousness. So we need to pray as a community. Wake up, like Pastor Ron says, Bethel. The seeds of revival are in this land, 321 East Avenue.
See, Tanner thought he would not have to go back, but there was a situation, I'm not sure what it was, but he had to go back for a short time, uh, so he was still employed there by the federal system right. for, for what he needed. He needs to stay in the So country. they passed out to all the teachers. Did you say that? Yeah, they passed out a form that said he, he had to commit not to disclose information to the parents of children who wanted to transgender. And Tanner says, I cannot, I cannot check this box. As, as a parent now, he's a daddy. He says, I, I, I'm the one that's supposed to be uh, the authority over my children, not the schools. So he did not check the box. The next thing he did was he called ADF, Alliance Defending Freedom, which is huge, and ADF is doing all the back work that they need to do. But it takes a man of courage. Now, I said to my daughter, how many teachers are parents in the school district? How many teachers are parents? Why aren't these teachers who are parents signing, taking this document and saying no? That's the question. Because they lack courage. They don't want to lose their Tanner courage. refused to check the box. And one other teacher. One other teacher. Refused to check the box. But they will win. They will win, and the families will win, the families will. and the teachers you couldn't stand for them. Mm -hmm. They will win too, uh, but they won't win because of what they've done. Now, things are not that cool here in Monroe County either. Mm. Things are happening that you'd be amazed. There's so much pornography out there designed for kids that their minds are being polluted and there's no checks and balances to it unless the parents stand up and do something about it. My there. Friend, what did Josiah do? Eight years old. Are we going to depend on that generation to come to do the work we're supposed to be doing? Cleaning out the temple or this nation. That's the job of moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. Got it. Uh, can I go now? <laughs> Listen, for those of you who are interested, there's going to be a, a seminar on August 25th. For you, those of you parents who are interested, it's by a gal from the Southern Tier uh, her name is Bridget Heap, and uh, it's for parents especially to know what's happening in the schools and what they can do about it and how they can stand. This announces a meeting, a seminar, August 25th in Jubilee Christian Center in Brockport, New York, and I want you to uh, be aware of that. This gal is going to do the same seminar at our land meeting the second Monday in September. And uh, I mean, we'll put chairs around the outside for any parents who want to come. Uh, but you need to know how to stand up and what you can do with all of this that's happening today. So if any of you want to come, there's a few of these brochures. Any of you parents, I, I really would encourage you to register and do it quickly because Jubilee's not that big a place. All right, you can get a free backpack for all your kids. And they don't even have to be there, okay? But I, I just wanted you aware of that. And we're going to do a couple more seminars with this gal from the Southern Tier. Have you ever wondered where God is? With all the stuff that's happening in our world today? God's not wringing his hands. He's got it all under control. He needs us. He can't do it without us. He needs us. But I want to just talk to you real quickly, and I don't even know how much of it we'll get to, but God's plan for planet Earth is probably not the same that you think it might be. There's not going to be a gradual fix to evil going to be a cosmic divine fix to evil. 
But God is gracious and he's loving. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that true? So God is not biding his time because he's not interested. He's not biding his time because he wants evil. To win. He's biding his time so he can bring full disclosure to the depth of the corruption that exists, not only in our nation, but all the nations of the world. They are going to be exposed. Why does God bring exposure before he brings correction and remedy? Because of all the people who have been deceived and would be lost without him. He's not willing that any should perish but some will. But God will do his best, and he will delay, but evil would never win. Make sure of that. And there will be no political fixes to it. You're not voting for Republican or Democrat. When you go into the voting booth, you better know the word of God, and you better know what that person you're going to pull the lever stands for. Because if they don't stand for righteousness, you're complicit with Satan. And because you're not sure, you, you can't stay home because God's children don't stay home when they can use their influence to make sure the kingdom of God comes and the will of God can be done. You can only do what you can do, but God can do anything he determines to do, and he's not left us in the dark about what he's going to do. He says, I'm going to expose the evil. There are going to be people who, who are so shocked that they have been so deceived. They're going to wake up and they're going to say, but what do I do? Where do I turn? I hope you live in their neighborhood, and I hope your light shines brightly, and I hope the salt that you're spreading by your influence and your action is so tasty that they'll say, I know where I need to go. Laura lives in my neighborhood. Anne Marie lives in my neighborhood. These guys live in their neighborhood. Not only do they live in my neighborhood, I know the guy who knows what's happening, who works with me, who lives with me. Speak Jesus. Speak Jesus. He's the answer. He's the answer. Speak Jesus. Be bold. Ask somebody, do you know who Jesus is? You know how much I love him. I love him so much that I have to tell you that he holds life, your life and death in his hand. He's already provided for your life so that you don't have to die. So you want to choose life or you want to die? You choose. Come on. Let's get real. If they're not presented with Jesus, they will be lost. And not because the father was so angry with the evil he's willing to destroy them. He is doing everything he can, but he can't do what we need to do. He can only do what he can do. And believe me, he can do enough to get it all done. But he will not do it without his church. So it's time to wake up and smell the roses before they're all gone. Let me just give you quickly a few things about God's plan for planet Earth. You might have in your mind this question, is this present Earth and universe going to be completely destroyed so that no facet of it ever continues to exist? Well, let's see what the Bible says about that. Luke 21, 33, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. 2 Peter 3.10 says, The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire in the earth, and everything of it will be laid bare. Sounds like he's really going to do a good job with it, isn't he? But is it going to be extinguished? Is, he, is that what he's really saying here? Re Revelation 21, 1. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven, the first earth had passed away. Now, we got some hope here. 
Something's passing away, but something's coming to replace it. So I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And by the way, there was no longer any sea. From these passages, it's clear that the earth as it now is will not remain. See, that's what you have to understand when you're reading these scriptures. He's saying, the earth that I now is will not remain. Scriptures like this, how, how should we view planet earth? Do we see it as, as irreparably corrupted and disintegrating into nothing so that God has to create a whole new planet in its place? No. But the yes is all right because it's so different. Many people will think it's a brand new. But planets have been here before. It will be a brand new planet, not just a new supernatural space something or other. It will be a new heaven and a new earth. And by the way, that says to me that heaven and earth are getting closer together. It may think like it's getting further apart, but believe me, when God's done, there will be no distance between heaven and earth. Isn't that great? I can fly on one side and be an angel and the other side and be a person. No, I'm not saying that. Because angels will still be angels and people will still be people. But all the cosmic warfare that's going on between the heaven and the earth now will be removed. And so that we will live in the atmosphere of righteousness and holiness. No sin will abound. There will be no more death, no more tears, no more disease, no more crying. Isn't that great? So add these words to these verses. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens as it is now will disappear with a roar and the elements as they are now will be destroyed by fire and earth and everything in it as it is now will be laid bare and making way for that which is to come. And believe me, any of the stuff we're going through now is not even worthy to begin to be compared with what God has in store for us in a new heaven and a new earth. But understand, God is saying something. I'm not done. I will deal with this. But I'm going to give mankind every chance I can. To choose Jesus who is the only way to truth and life. Let me just go on. And by the word, new heaven and new earth, there is an interesting word. I can't pronounce it. It's a Greek word. It's kainos or kainos or something like that. And it's new. But it's, it's new in the sense that, you know, if... One pencil gets all eaten up and chewed up and used by me. I pick up a new pencil. It is still a pencil. You see? It replaces the one that I wore out. He gives me a new pencil. A new earth is not a whole new invention and creation of God. It, he will take... See, he will take... He'll shake whatever can shake, make, make it fuel for whatever will burn. It's, the Bible says that in the end time, he's going to shake the earth so that nothing, the only thing that can remain is what can't be shaken. The only thing that can't be shaken is what's based on Jesus Christ. So your thoughts, your words, you want to make sure they're God thoughts and they're God words because all those words that you're speaking or creating things, that stuff's all going to be removed and only what is of Christ will last. We have to be careful. We have to be diligent as children of the light that our thoughts are filled with light and our words are filled with light and not darkness. 
and not evil. <clears throat> when a butterfly emerges from its cocoon, does it cease to be a caterpillar? Or is it forever connected to that stage? A butterfly can't be a butterfly without having been a caterpillar and going through a metamorphosis. You see, that's the problem with many of us. We haven't understood the process of renewal and metamorphosis, you know? In our fallen man, we are not what we shall be, but as saved, born again, children of God, we aren't what we used to be. I was that old man, but he made me a new man. Most of me doesn't know it yet. So the reality of what is true spiritually, because I'm born again and I have a new spirit that is now in touch with God, the old me has to give way to the new me. And he does that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Everything that comes from God comes from the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. So you don't get anything from the Father that doesn't come through Jesus, and you don't get anything through Jesus that doesn't come by the Holy Spirit. So what God does in me he gives me a brand new spirit, and in that spirit are seeds that are called promises. They're not the full reality of all that has occurred in my spirit, but they are, the, they are the testimony of what could be if I could get them planted in the right place. That's why Paul says, I beseech you, I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice to the Lord. That's your reasonable service. If you're a Christian, that's the most reasonable thing that I believe could ask of you. Just let what Jesus did for you when you were born again become who you are now. You're not disconnected. You don't cease to be a person when you're born again. You don't cease to have a body. You, you cease to have a body. You've been saved, but you're still being saved so that you can really get saved when it's all done. So you can remain miserable, worried, anxious, tired, stressed, bound, demonized, even though you don't have to see those pictures on the wall if you look at the right thing. Thank God. The difference was Jesus. So if you, if you will take the seed and plant it. So he says, so here's what you need to do. If you want your body to be a living sacrifice, he, he says, be transformed. Good. That tree becomes a truck. <laughs> no. Plant the seed I put in you, in your mind to replace that stinking thought you just had. That anger, unforgiveness, and bitterness, take my forgiveness, my grace, my love and mercy for the one who did that to you and plant that seed in your heart and say, God, help me love them the way you love them. See, we got a problem now. We think hating sin is hating sinners. God loves sinners. That's why he's still waiting to the last moment. But believe me, I believe the last moment is upon us. So I believe it's urgent for the body of Christ to have a jet-propelled transformation. We can't play Mickey Mouse with the things of God. We need to examine ourselves in the light of the Holy Spirit. Every thought that we think, every emotion that 
that takes charge of us, we need to say, is this really what Jesus would do? Is this what Jesus would think? And is this anxiety and this depression and this pressure that I'm feeling, is this, what would Jesus do? He'd just say, Father, I cast my care on you. You care for me. See, it's really important for the body to grow up right now and mature because there is a harvest coming. There aren't enough harvesters out there to reap. There are going to be people who are going to waken up to the evil that they've been sucked into and the demonic stuff that has taken a hold of them. They're going to be looking around for people who are shining, who are speaking hope, who have a testimony of being born again that's showing in who they are so that people can find their way out of the darkness. And I'm telling you, this will be the greatest revival in the history of the world. Day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' death and resurrection, Peter says, was what God would said would happen in the last days. The last days started way back then. These are the last of the last days. I believe that you're beginning to see the crumbling because there has to be a crumbling. I, I, we were singing today when we were talking about Oh, I, I just, I love that worship set this morning, didn't you? You could do this for the next four weeks if you wanted to. I, and thank you for doing I Speak Jesus again today. <laughs> Everything that exists exists because it came out of the breath of God through the word of God. Everything that's good, that is. When God got finished doing what he's doing in Genesis 1, he says, boy, this is really good. Well, what's coming is going to be the continuation of that which was really good. The tree of life, it'll be in the garden on both sides of the river, bringing fruit for the healing of the nations. Every month, a fresh fruit from the same tree of life. It's Jesus. He's the tree of life. But let me just close by saying this, by the way, I just got through six pages of notes, okay? Uh, I, I just want you to understand God's Father heart. Honestly, I'm saying, Lord, come when you're ready, but not before. Because I know the only reason you wait is that someone else can be saved. And Lord, forgive me because there are a whole lot of opportunities you've given me I've never taken advantage of to bring that word of hope that only Jesus can bring. But I want to take you to to a question that every wise thinking person should seek to find an answer to. 2 Peter 3.11. You can read the context, but here's the question. Because of what has already been said in verse 11, he says, therefore, since all these things will be, what manner of persons ought you and I to be? See, what God is saying here, 
what I need to get done, I can't do without you. So I'm asking you, in light of what I am about to bring and what I'm about to do and the exposure that I'm about to bring, how would every one of my children who are wise and thinking people find the answer? What manner of persons ought you to be? What bothered Peter the most of all that the heretics of his day were heretics of his day were teaching was that they were denying the second coming of Christ. In 2 Peter 3, verses 3 and 4, it says, Knowing this verse, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust. And as they come walking, fully amassed according to their own sinful ways and their own lust, they will say to you, Where's the promise of his coming? Since our fathers fell asleep, everything continues as it was from the beginning of creation. And I can tell you, sometimes it looks like that right now, but wake up, get ready. God's about to move, and everything's going to shake that can be shaken. I'm telling you, everything that is going to shake that can be shaken. Do you know that rocks can be shaken? You know, you were singing about the breath of God, and I was thinking the breath of God created everything that exists. Jesus said, let there be and there was. Let there be and there was. Let there be and there was. The, the, the core energy of all things is the word of God. It's sound waves. It's vibrations. Rocks vibrate. Did you know that? If you get the right frequency, you can just cause that that rock to de deconstruct all by itself. It doesn't need anything else. You just get to tune in the right frequency. Buildings have a certain frequency. If you could turn into just the right frequency and let it continue, that, that, that building would collapse by itself. It could not because, because the, it was all created by the word of God. That's how all those things can worship God as well, by just being what he created them to be and doing what he created them to do. Well, that's true of us well. Let's be what we were created to be. Let's do what we were created to do. Let's think God's thoughts. Let's speak God's word. Let's have God's love. Let's not, let's not will anyone to perish, but that all should come to repentance. And then we can say, God, when you're ready, you do what you're going to do. Just get me out of here be first before it all happens. <laughs> when the earth burns with a fervent heat, I'm not going to be here. Neither are you. God's going to burn up all that can be burned up so that all that couldn't be burned up can be put back on it. And things could be at the end the way they began in the beginning. Amen. Let me speak a Father's blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face upon you so that you see his smile. Lord, protect you and keep you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.